I always thought there was just something wrong with me. I was really ashamed of what my body looked like and how I had to treat it to get to look the way that it needed to. My whole life, I've had this idea that I'm not yet good enough, but I will be, and it's all around my size. What else in life am I not doing? Because somewhere in my primordial soup of assumptions about myself is this belief that I shouldn't be doing it because I'm the wrong body. Emily and I have been talking about doing a nice trip for a really long time. We're both talking about how much we need a break and to just go have type one fun. I love Slovenia. It has everything you want and it has nothing you don't want. A 12 hour journey, no, a 14 hour journey to Slovenia. I'm already tired. I just wanted to spend a few days riding around in the mountains and stopping to admire the view and picking the really good bits and really enjoying them. Wow! My friendship with Jenny is one of the most valuable friendships I have. You know, this is a really niche world that we both operate in and come alive in. So just having someone that vibes with you that's on your wavelength has just been really amazing. Come on, come on, scream if you want to come out there. Come on, Jenny, keep that coming. Yeah. Emily's one of those pioneers in the bikepacking world and the ultracycling world. She first came into my sphere when she went and won the Transcontinental, which is one of the most famous and also one of the hardest ultracycling races in the world. I just remember seeing the finished photos of her and I was like, that's it, like, that's the woman. I really look up to her and so many women in cycling do as well. <laughs> look at this, look at this, it's right there. Jenny Tuff is just one of the most impressive people in ultra sports at the moment. She excels in not one, but two sports. She's also an ultra runner and she runs across mountain ranges and she's amazing at that. She wins races where you're carrying your bike up a mountain over rocks at 5,000 meters for half the race. She has won the Atlas Mountain Race. She's won the Silk Road Mountain Race twice. She's someone that I and I think a lot of people look up to. <laughs> I did not think this would be funny. Emily was the first person that I opened up to about what was really going on there. And she completely understood it because she loves these sports as much as I do. I was kind of always stuck in this balance between running and cycling and sport being the way to explore the world, but also very much a very clear exercise addiction. I got told that I had an eating disorder. I didn't know that I had one. So when a doctor told me that was what I had done, it was a really sobering moment to realize that I am slowly destroying my body. This sport that I love so much, I can't have it anymore unless I just accept what and who I am and start treating my body well. I was always told that I was fat. The body I had and the way I was was not good enough. There was always something slightly over there that is what I should be aiming for. For one, there is absolutely no correlation between how somebody's body looks and how they yeah. feel about it. When you and I started having those conversations publicly, just this warm collective hug from the planet of people saying, of everyone, of every walk of life, age, size, gender, saying, yeah, I went through that or I am going through that. Everyone seems to be wrong about how they look. 
And so we're all just going through life as the wrong person. When you start talking about it to people is when you start to heal. Just talk to someone, because you'd be so amazed that so many people around you are going through this. And if you have a buddy to get through it with, which is what Emily and I are doing for each other, you know, you really, the clouds will start to part. She has been one of the, the foundations of that quite significant change in my life. It just slides me slightly further along the scale towards 100% loving my body. So scared me to put my water. You're a child, Emily Chappell. I don't know when one day I'll wake up and say, I really love and appreciate my body, I'll never hurt it again. But that's my goal. Having Emily really encouraging me on those lines is like, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's just been like really healing process having Emily for this. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. It's all fine. Okay. When I'm riding my bike through the mountains, it's as though I don't have a body and I don't have a gender and I don't have a size or a weight or a look or a color or anything. The mountains don't care. They don't care what you look like. They don't care how you identify. If you have huge wilderness dominating you, it can make you kind of reflect on what is and is not important. You can just quickly forget about these vain threads of our culture that need to define you and put you in boxes. You're just you, and you don't need labels on that. When you're doing something that's positive and healthy and physically rewarding with your body, that is going to change your relationship with your body. I just want to be out there and be this incredibly small speck of warmth and flesh and muscle and willpower in amongst these enormous mountains. That's the way I would rather experience my body.